Welcome back, everybody. This is episode two. We're in our new apartment, and I couldn't be happier with this weather. We are in San Antonio. We just moved in. It's our first week here, and I just wanted to get another book done. We got a book done this week. This will be Master Key to Riches. This is by Napoleon Hill. I hope you guys enjoy this series. Please hit the subscribe button below if you have not yet, and we will get right into it. So this is Master Key to Riches. I read this book this week. I read it through Audible. You can get this book most likely at your local bookstore again. This is a lesser known book, just so you know, so you may not find it right away at your local bookstore. You might have to order it through an online platform, but either way, it's a pretty good book, I would say. Something that you might wanna check out. So in this book, we go through about 11 to 12 chapters with Napoleon Hill on some of the success principles of, uh, we're talking about the riches, the master key to riches. And he doesn't define this necessarily in monetary values. He doesn't say, oh, here's the master key to gold, or here's the master key to diamonds, or a nice house, or it's sort of more in this, um, defining more on what is a rich richness of life. Uh, in other words, you could say this is the rich qualities of life. When you have these things, you have an enriched life. You have a, uh, a, a, a life worth living. So he'll list about 12 uh, riches in life. Some of them are kind of uh, vague or some of them are pretty specific. We have, I'll just list some of them here. We have a positive mental attitude. We have good health. We have harmony in relationships, freedom from fear, hope of achievement, capacity for faith, a willingness to share your blessings, a capacity to understand people, economic security. Now all of these things, you could have a different definition of your success, your riches. I would say more likely than not, some of these things will hit you in your uh, list of things that you may be going for when you say, when you define yourself as successful. These are just some of the things, keep in mind that Napoleon Hill is defining as keys to success. Not all of these things are something that you're going for or something that will bring you uh, everlasting happiness or uh, will be a richness to you. But I would say that a lot of these rank true for myself and I wanna get into some of the main one or two that I decided would make the most sense for my life. So let's get right into number one. It's positive mental attitude. This is what Napoleon Hill says, all other riches in life are hinged upon is a positive mental attitude. And it's hard to disagree with that. If I think about my life and the things that I sort of want and, and would like to be a part of my life, they will hinge upon or they will be built upon a mental attitude of positivity. I mean, how can you deny those things? And he's explaining in this book that we're given two personalities in life. One is a personality of dreaming and going beyond their limitations, uh, one who expects optimistic results and abundance. As we all know, we do have this inside of us. Some of us may have it a little bit more active, some of us may not. I, for one, have been working on my way to bring about this positive, this optimistic part of my uh, personality as time has gone on. And it's an everyday, everyday, it's an everyday thing that you have to sort of work on, at least for me. And he also defines the opposite, which is a uh, personality that's more undermining, it's thinking the worst and the negatives. And he explains that what you wanna do is empower the first one that he talks about, the positive, the one that doesn't think about limitations and dreams. Uh, you wanna empower this personality, he says, and to nurture that part of you that is dreaming, that is knowing that no matter what, things are going to be okay and work out for the best. So I will say from personal experience that this success principle and one of the keys to riches is very important. We're going to have things that come up in life, but there is a way to work on yourself so that when these things come up, that it's not always the end of the world. We're not always looking at the negative side of the coin there is always a positive. And to acknowledge that the negative is there, but to immediately resolve with yourself that you are going to use this for your own benefit or positive result. Because we all know that there are those who take circumstances that may be negative or may be a de detriment to their uh, future, 
but they turn them around and they become better because of them. And that is what we're talking about here. We're talking about a personality that drives forward no matter what, that takes the negative and transmutes it, that changes it into a positive. And this is a very, very uh, hard thing to get your grasp on when you don't know about it. But when you first discover this uh, personality inside of you and you start to draw it out, this will get you places that you thought you would never be able to go. So in conclusion, this is one of the most important riches that you can develop in yourself. And it starts now. It starts today that you will continue on no matter what with a positive mental outlook. And it's going to be hard, but we all have to work on it. So we go on to another chapter in uh, Master Key to Riches and we get to a chapter on capacity of faith. And you may be thinking, okay, faith, we're talking about religion, we're talking about maybe Christianity, or some obscure idea that you have about faith. What he's actually getting to is that your mind, your brain, your thinking is like an empty field. It is a crop that you must prime and prepare for that which you're asking for because faith is the foundation to success. And a man who does not have faith will not be as successful as the man that does. It is a master key to riches. And faith is a foundation to any successful man because of the simple fact that you must be able to see what is not there yet. If you do not have the skill, I from personal experience can say that you will struggle because when you have a dream and you think about all the steps it's going to take to get there, there is a level of faith that can be developed that is not ignorant of the fact that you will have to put in the work, but you have the faith in yourself and the belief that if you work on these things consistently, that that result will come. Because when you first start off, you are not there yet. You are not in possession of that of which you are trying to achieve. So that faith, the capacity for faith, will allow you to drive forward in those moments when the rain gets heavy, when the storm clouds come in, and you feel that you can't go on. That faith will drive you. So once your mind is ready, he says, that faithful and preparedness will allow you to receive that which you start to magnetize. Because again, if you are not ready for what you are asking for, God, the universe, the infinite, will not give you what you want at the right time. So again, the capacity for faith is very important. Developing a faith in yourself, in your steps, in your work, and in the things that you believe in will allow you to continue on in a spirit of belief and certainty. And by some unknown fact, I would call it God, I would call it infinite, that this will allow you to get further than the man that does not have faith. We all know that successful men have to have some level of faith. It may not be hinged on religion, but it has to be there. That you have the faith in your dream, in your destiny, that what you're doing will follow through to the end. So we get to our last part here, which I will call the going the extra mile principle. This is a principle that I went over in my last video. If you want to check that one out, Book Bikes episode one. This is the philosophy of the worker, the philosophy of the entrepreneur, the philosophy of going the extra mile. Now, this is a well-known virtue that Napoleon Hill has gone over in some of his other books. We all know about this, but maybe we're playing with it a little bit. We know it's that extra oomph, that extra effort, but what does that mean in reality? What action can we perform to get this? And so what Napoleon Hill says is that in order to receive the opportunities that others cannot, the others are trying to get, you must be the one that is depended upon to go the extra mile, to go that extra step that the others are not willing to do. Put in that extra work, that extra hour, and you will get the result you're looking for. Now this is not to be confused, he says, with trying to get a result because of that extra mile. You have to play with it a little bit. So if you are trying to get something for that extra mile, yes, you know in your head that you must do this, but it has to become a habit. 
It has to become something that you do unconsciously so that you may become the man who does go, or woman, that does go the extra mile. So again, it's the one that pushes that little bit, the one that stops putting in the minimum effort in order to get the result he wants or she wants, and the willingness to go that extra mile will change who you are. Again, this for me is a habit. It's a habit, it's a choice, it's something that you do when intentionally. It's something that you do intentionally. So if you're at the gym, or if you are uh, maybe doing something for somebody else, and you want to go that extra, do that one little thing. And it can be little, it can be large, but it's just the matter of going that extra mile. So what I can say about this personally is that it is, it is a habit. It is something that you have to get in the habit of doing and so it does not become a chore because it's easy enough to get into something and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I staying a little bit later? Why am I having to do this test that nobody else wants to do? And you just have to remind yourself that this is just a part of a success principle that you need to build in yourself in order to succeed. So in conclusion, this book is a fantastic book for those of us who are looking for some more principles, some more keys to the successful life we want to live. It's going over a lot of the things that we already know to do, which is to work hard, to stay later than the other person. What I love about this book is the simplicity of it, the not defining life's riches as necessarily monetary, that harmony in relationships and the freedoms from fear and the type of person that you become by living out these principles is actually the reward as opposed to um, all the things that you think you can accumulate in order to make yourself successful. Some of the things that I did not like about this book is the fact that it went so heavy into some of, of the topics and it seemed a little bit disjointed as well because when I went into this book I did have an expectation that this book would lead me into more of a step-by-step -step, this is the master key to success sort of building out this this list and it didn't really do that it gave it to you maybe in the first few chapters but after that it went off course and just told you stories about Henry Ford and all those stories that we may have heard a few times and it was a good reminder of the things that we want to pay attention to, but at the end of the day, there are better books out there for these kind of things. So maybe this book isn't for you, and 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 I would say it is something that you should have around if you have read a lot of this stuff, but if you have not, again, I say start with Think and Grow Rich and see where you go from there because I would say this is not the book to start with. <laughs> it's very uh, dry at some points, and it's just over and over repetitive and it's not really a plot kind of book that leads you down a narrow straight path to your uh, destination. It's just very disjointed and all over the place. So again, I would give this book a seven out of 10 if I had to. It's missing some key components to a good uh, narrative, but as a whole, I think what it's talking about really resonates with me and everything that I am trying to do in my life and yours, I hope. So with that, guys, I am all done with episode two. I hope you guys enjoyed this series or are enjoying this series. Check in next week. We will have another video for you. Peace.